It was. Okay. It, if it starts acting funny, Zell, I'm okay. going to just move. All right, man. We are live. This is Knife at Night with Zell and Staza. And today we got a, a few things to look at, and then we're just going to kind of let you guys lead we us along. This is Knife at Oops, Night sorry. with Zell and Staza. Yeah, and... <laughs> Nick has got a little background noise. All right. So earlier today, I did a bit of a live show about the Willemson knives. And I kind of wanted to fill in a little more about these knives before we get too deep. First off, Staza, what do you think of these guys? I think they look really cool. Um, did they have those at, at Blade Show uh, Atlanta this year? They did, but it was a completely different knife. Uh, not yeah, completely so. different, but it was, uh, there were several things that got changed on the way to manufacture uh, for the better, in my opinion. I mean, uh, it looks like a good looking knife. Oh, it is a good looking knife. I've already heard a little bit. People are wondering about this flat choil, which uh, I actually liked. Uh, it's, yeah. it's good. And some people whining about the, uh, separation between the handle and the blade you know i don't get too upset about that i think that's a, a fair trade-off whenever you're getting a good choil for close-up work you know what's your opinion staza well i mean i think they did a much better job on that than they did on the brower the brower to me is it looks funky um because they didn't they didn't join that choil with the handle and it leaves you with a huge gap between the blade and the choil. Yeah, so I think they did a, I think they did a good job. They got a couple of cool colors. I really love this bronze that they've done. Really good looking. I'm glad to see the uh, the alternate Wii logo on the pivot. I like that a lot. And you know, here's the other one. We'll get a look at it real quick. And how you doing, guys? Woodland Tactical is with us again. He was with us earlier. Uh, and yeah, Slicey's here. Hey, hey Slicey. Ray. <laughs> you better hope your stalker's not on today. <laughs> All right, Woodland Tactical, let's talk about that, because that's one of the things that uh, came out with the earlier video, seeing that edge come all the way back to the handle. This knife, in particular, is not designed to hold right here. If you hold this knife right here, it's all kinds of weird and funky and doesn't feel right if you've got i've got medium large hands but even medium hands are going to get awful weird on it it has meant to be held right here uh and you know that's part of it and it's part of the ergonomic load uh we can look through what do we have here well here's a todd knife and tool knife we don't have the blade as far out but we still have the blood the edge Coming a little further out to get that choil in there. And actually in the final production model, that choil will be just a little bigger on that one. Oh, uh, what else? I have a quick question for you, Zell. Is is the full production model gonna have that recurve in it? In on this one? On the, on the Williams. William? Yes, these are production model knives that I have here. Uh, they will have that little bit of a recurve. And I'm you know, I'm not a huge fan of recurves, but this is a gentleman's tactical knife, is what Willemson says about it. So, okay, there's enough of a recurve there to actually do something, so I'm not going to fuss too much. It's going to be a pain to sharpen, though. But yeah. I mean, it, it doesn't look like... It actually looks like that recurve it is not a, super not a super committal recurve, so it looks like you could... You could get that if you do it right on your uh, fixed angle sharpening system. Oh, yeah. If you were careful, KME or Wicked Edge, either one would sharpen this guy. I mean, it's nowhere near like my Pena. That's, that's a, a monster recurve on that Pena X series. Oh, yeah. Those things seriously are. Uh, you know, back to the choil thing. You know, it's kind of proven. If you go back, we've even got an XM18 over here. Choils can be good. Not everybody likes them, but uh, I've learned, well, I've got to the point where whenever I pick up a knife, I expect one to be there. I've cut myself a couple of times on spider crows that didn't have them, which was kind of a bum deal. A uh, couple other things in the news that we want to kind of 
touch on before we get too deep. Uh, we have the Menaggio Makers. That's the Italian Makers. I don't know if I pronounced that right or not. Probably not. But they have gathered up to form Makita, which it stands for Menaggio Innovations Knife Italy. And it's a network of them together uh, trying to use their combined knowledge to bring better knives. Uh, and I don't... And I guess it's going to be MKM is going to be the brand, and uh, we're going to start seeing MKM knives. So it's kind of a collaboration of all the Italian people, and uh, then we're going to have this deal where we don't know who actually made it. So you know, I don't know about this. I don't know if it's going to be good or bad. What do you think, Staza? Um, from from the ones I handled. Um... I think I think they they got something going there. Um, I mean, everybody knows that Maniago is the the knife capital of Italy. I mean, that's just like um, what where it, what place is it that uh, kind of like in China where they got you know they have a district like a warehouse district that that is full of machine shops. Uh, Maniago is supposedly the their their cutlery capital area. So I, I think it, it's got a lot of potential to be something great. Uh, and it's all going to depend on, you know, the, the, the quality that comes out of the first set of knives. I'll, I'll well, be interested to check them out. Yeah, I agree. And that's, to me, that's the big deal about the Italian manufacturers. If we see them come with knives that have consistent quality out of this new brand, it could be a great thing because right now, I don't know what your opinion is, but my opinion is during dealing with Viper or Lion Steel or some of the others is they make really cool knives that could be awesome. And a lot of times you've got to try two or three of them before you get a really good one. And it's kind of yeah. depressing. Yeah, especially with like Viper and um, what's that other one had several issues. Just hit or miss. You get a good one or you get a terrible one. So hopefully um, this combination will be putting their knowledge together as a group and we'll see more, you know, quality products. I, I saw the ones they had at Blade Show were collaborations with, uh, I think, an Anzo collaboration they had with this. wasn't I don't know if it was a front flipper. It was just odd. It was a, I don't know, something different and interesting. They had a slip joint they showed and... Uh, I think a Burnley collaboration. Did you see those? Oh, I think I must have missed those. That's, that's weird. I usually try to get around. I don't like talking to the Italians because they're kind of, well, they've <laughs> always been kind of snooty to me. And I don't know if it's because I'm some backwoods hillbilly and they just think I'm worthless or what, but that that's the way it comes across. Uh, Woodland Tactical. The the tie spine is, is a pretty, pretty nice grill. I would say I, I had one for a little while, and uh, it was a beautiful knife. It it had a few not issues, but um, the 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 deployment was a little strange, just the way it was set up. But it was a beautiful knife, definitely well made. Have you ever checked out one of those out? The tie no, spine? No, I haven't. I had long time ago. I had some interactions with the Italian makes before I met the folks and just didn't have anything good. You know, even this last, this Hinderer collab uh, with Viper. Yeah. Took two of those and quite a bit of me tinkering to get a good one. So I, I've not, you know, really been someone to just go buy their stuff, even if it was cool. And somebody asked about the price on this. I don't know for sure, but it should be, about 250 somewhere in there uh if somebody can jump to blade hq and see because i'm pretty sure these are already on sale uh, one thing i did want to mention we kind of got off on a different subject there on these knives these sticks knives they do have let me get some of this stuff out of the way here they do have the hinderer issue and by the hinderer issue i mean we've got jumping all across here for your finger yeah. to land on it's yeah. not as mean as the hinderer jimping, but it's there. 
and we also have that hook on the end of the flipper tab. Same thing as the hinderer, except worse. The hinderer, you can flip it. Not a problem. Unless you're flipping it 100 times a day or 200 times in an hour, it's not going to give you a hard time, except for the landing on that jimping. But uh, this one is one that if I were going to keep one of these for myself, I would consider hitting the edges of the corners of that with a stone or something. They're not super sharp, but uh, they're not exactly nice. So wanted to get that out there before we move along because I don't want to be, I don't want people to say, well, you said it was a nice knife and it's all pointy here and nasty there. And you know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, uh, Brian said they have them on White Mountain for 253 So whoever was asking about that, $253. Yeah, so if they've made it to White Mountain, then they've made it everywhere for 250 253 somewhere around there. Uh, uh, A-Ray, A-Ray said the knife in the middle has got a proud handle, and I think he was talking about the, um, at the time you had the, what is it, the Master uh, Perpetua. Oh, the Perpetua. Yeah, it does have a, a pretty nice size handle. But, I mean, that's kind of what goes with the axis lock almost. Um, yeah. And Staz is right. Whenever you do the axis lock, you have this deal around your pivot area where the blade has to be a certain height to match up with a mechanism back here, which makes the handle have to be a certain height right here. Now, the, the 710 from uh, in the... The 710 and what is the one that everybody has? Slicey's got like six of them or something. Oh, the uh, the 940. The 940s, they get around that, but if you take those knives apart, they have very, very small amounts of metal around the uh, pivot. So yeah. that makes this area of the knife kind of thick. And then you have to, you know, if you're going to do things right, you have to make the rest of it somewhat proportionate. You know, unless you're Tossy Brucia, then you do all kinds of art stuff with that and make it skinny and cool looking. Yeah, you make a stained glass window with it. Right, right. But the Perpetua, I think we've talked about this guy in every live stream. This guy is... You have more than that, Slicey. Uh, it is the most amazing axis lock knife straight out of the box I've ever seen. It's uh, no side-to-side no -side play. Uh, now, mine is not drop-free, but it's plenty good enough. Now, I got one in my hand as well right now, and the I love the ergos on it. Show I, it to us, Nick. Oh, there I, you I go. I uh, uh, love the ergos on it. Very comfortable. Um, the, the My biggest complaint on it is they could have moved that thumb stud up just a little bit or took a chamfer out of here because... I, it's it's uncomfortable for me to to actuate, but you know it's not going to be uncomfortable for the average person because your hand shouldn't be like this. But um, I can actuate it; it's just not comfortable for me. Uh, but you know, if I if this was my knife, I would I would just take a little bit out of this G10 right there, just to access that stud a little bit better because I mean it's up against this this liner. I absolutely um, agree with you. That that could be fixed. And guys, we've got this thing going on that I don't know how to fix. We have our screens going back and forth. Last time I was able to control this without any problem. This time it's trying to automatically swap on me. So, yeah, so just just know, you know, if you if we're if we're our screens going back and forth, just know what's going on. You know, we can't really do nothing about it. You and know, yes, just... Slicey. Yeah, we're doing what we can. Yes, Slicey, the Perpetua is a better Benchmade than a Benchmade. However, you are about to see something from Doug Ritter and Hogue Knives that's flipping yep. amazing. You saw, uh, what you call it, uh, Epic Snuggle Bunny? Yeah, I handled that knife about a week or so ago. I was talking with Mr. Ritter, and uh, wow, it is just... Okay, well, it's a Ritter grip. It's the same design, same handle, same stuff as the old Ritter grip from Benchmade. But it's on a whole new level from Hogue. In fact, I've never really been terribly interested in any of the Hogue knives, but that Ritter grip, and I think they're going to be selling for about 150 bucks, 
his. Yeah, I think they were like 168, I think, on Knife Center. Okay, no, they're only through Knife Works. I mean, that's what I meant, Knife Works. My peeps. Yeah, yeah your peeps down there in L.A. Yep. It is on Snuggle Bunny's channel. Uh, I was talking with Mr. Ritter, and I didn't even think to take a picture of it. Sorry, guys. What's going I know on? If he, um, if he does a, a small version of that knife, the small, like, you know, I know it's the, the large size, right? Right now, yeah. Yeah, I, I sold my large one not too long ago, my Benchmade version. Right. And it was a perfect sample. Um, only reason I sold it, just because, it, you know, the size. That's it, man. And it's, it's a perfect size for your average person. But for me, it just didn't work out that way. So I really, really hope he comes out with a small because I absolutely love, love that blade shape. Well, I agree with you. And last thing in the news before we get on to other stuff is... We have the Slinger from Stat Gear, and it's up on Kickstarter. If you search Kickstarter, it's the Slinger, pocket-sized EDC flipper knife. There's also a story over on Knife News about it. And yeah. it looks kind of interesting. It's got a little, I don't know, kind of a reverse Tonto-ish blade. Uh, but I don't know anything about Stat Gear. I've never had any of their knives. You know anything about them, Nick? Yeah, well... Well, first off, I used to be a slinger back in in college. No, no, uh, that that that's a whole different oh, thing, we're man. We're not talking about. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I thought we were talking about slingers. Swing. Oh, you said oh, slingers. Yeah, dude, 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 don't talk. <laughs> Your wife will have us both, man. Don't. <laughs> okay, stack gear. Um. Okay, I've owned two of their knives so far. I got one of them right here in my hand. This was a Kickstarter project as well. Really cool little keychain knife. It's the Pocket Samurai. This is the titanium version. It's a $40 uh, keychain knife. You can buy the aluminum version, which didn't have a pocket clip, for $20. Bucks. Now you can get them on Amazon. The only thing with Stat Gear that I've noticed, and I've had two samples of the Aussis. That's the Micarta knife that they had or have. And I've had this example. Um, this thing has blade play that could be remedied by just taking it apart and putting a little bit more lock bar pressure. But I don't know what kind of uh, permanent super glue they use for the pivots. But when I say I tried everything from my soldering iron turning it colors to um, boiling it to you name it, I tried it and it's not coming free. So, and the 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 uh hardware is a little soft but if if they fix that issue there was a lot of, there was a lot to like or there's a lot to like about this little guy even though it's it's small i just love the design um how's the build on it that. what's the, that the, how's the build besides the not being able to get it apart how's the build on it well like i said um uh, it, it's 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 pretty good um 440c on this one it like i said it does have a lot up and down blade play lock lock mm. um and the screws are, are fairly soft but this is one of their like early early knives so i noticed with the osis um the build quality was a little bit better but it still had a few little issues um still had the permanent thread locker on the uh, pivot and still had soft hardware. All right. So, well, now we know something about them. Well, I guess we'll have to wait and see if they get any better because that's enough to make me a little nervous. Now, what, what was this knife? Like what did, what, what kind of knife was it? Oh, it's a little, uh, it looks like it's got about a one inch tall blade. So it's a knife a little bigger than what you've got. Probably let's see if they got any stats on it. Uh, it's got D2 steel in it, and I'm not seeing any stats. Three inch long handle, so it's got a two and a half or so inch. Here we go. Two inch blade. It's another little one. But yeah. it's more of your titanium. Or, oh, it's it's stainless steel for the handle material. Ugh, that's a bummer. Yeah, well, is it or is it not? I mean, I don't know. Well, how how, how much does it weigh? Uh, well, I was trying to get a price there, oh. but, uh, let me get back down here to what it weighs, but 
we need to have that conversation about uh, it only weighs 2.2 ounces, so it's not yeah. a big deal. Ain't a big deal. But we need to have that conversation about steel handle material. That's something that uh, that kind of interests me. I have thought to make some knives uh, out in the shop and use actual stainless for the lock side. And then use something like some uh, medium high durometer G10 or carbon fiber or whatever. Uh, some type of really light material for the show side. And, you know, whenever we make the titanium knives like that, like this one, you know, this thing's like 3.4 some ounces. So if I, if the back side was steel on one of ours, I, you know, I, we're probably going to gain an ounce is my yeah. guess. Which is, uh, that's, that's doable, you know, an ounce is okay. So like our big knives, instead of being four ounce knives, like, uh, I haven't weighed this guy, but I assume it's around four, four and a half ounces, maybe five, but I doubt it. Uh, I, I you know, I'd assume it'd push something like this up into that near six ounce category. But, uh, I've been thinking about that because the strength, huh? Huh? I said, I, I've always thought about it, especially if you can get the weight right because of the sheer strength you get out of it. Well, there's, I don't know if you, yeah, you get a little bit more rigidity out of the uh, steel versus the titanium because the, you have to use 6AL4V titanium and 6AL4V is a bit springy. You know, yeah, it has which, to be. Which has some good factors though, yeah. especially for a lock bar. <laughs> you got to have it for the lock bar. But uh, if you go with a stainless, you can get all that stuff. So, you know, I, I just, I, I may do it. I'm, I may try it and uh, and just see how it comes out instead of always using titanium. It's the only way you can do that. Hey, uh, Rick Kearns was asking your Warthog folder. Tell him what that was. Oh, the Warthog. All right, we got a whole complement of, let me get that Strider out of the way there. We got a whole complement of Warthog stuff out here. We have the Warthog pin we have the warthog uh this is a 58 millimeter swiss army knife a rambler and we have the warthog scale for the xm18 from hinderer knives and if you want any of that stuff dlt trading has all of it i want that pin <laughs> you want the pin yeah i need to get me one up well uh, you know they're reasonably priced well no i had i had one i had the brass but um I, while I was in the hospital, my wife sold my car because it wasn't going to be getting used. And whoever bought my car got a Hinder Investigator pin. Ah, okay. So yeah, you, you need one of these, though, with the Warthog thing on it. Do they have the aluminum with the yeah. Warthog? That's yeah. That's what I want. I, I, I got the, the stainless because I wanted that finish, this finish here. And the weight difference between the aluminum and the and the stainless and the pin was so minimal that I didn't worry about it. Yeah. Somebody was also asking. I mean, they're talking about the Aquila a good bit. Do you have that nearby? Because I want. I don't know which one that is. I do not have an Aquila nearby, but if you can talk for a minute, I'll swap over to you and I'll yeah, go get one. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, yeah, because I'm reading. I'm reading Brian's comments. Uh, what? What on the Aquila was bling? Uh, he said in the blade size. I've had someone freak out over my MP six hundred multi tool. Uh, well, the Woodland Tactical, you they just gonna freak out over anything that that's weapony, huh? Um, because I don't, I didn't recall any of them being too blingy. I mean, now this is blingy. That's that's bling bling, and this is blingy made uh, i did these the other day for the pilar where's my pilar huh. i was just playing with it oh, that didn't sound good huh people and check this out what y'all think about these I, I was playing around i got this part of a trade like five or six years ago so i decided to um up oh, there it is I decided to carve this guy up and do some mano on it like the way it came out. I've got gold liners and I mean Calvin. 
California, everything gives you cancer there, so I wouldn't live there. I'm just kidding. Get a grill. Stas is going to get a grill soon. Oh, you said grill? <laughs> what do you mean, gonna? I already got one. I'm rocking platinum. My Quilla has gold liners. Oh, I got you. I got you for the liners. Uh, but most of those liners are pretty muted, huh? I'm looking at my Naja. It's got gold liners, I think. Yeah. Yeah, I guess. If you had a buffer, you could probably buff that off pretty easily, depending on if it's plated or not. Yeah, I haven't tried that yet, but I think it'd be fairly easy to get it off there. Yeah, I might I might experiment for y'all. I'll I'll be the the guinea pig on that for y'all and see. And uh there is the Aquila. And there's been a lot of talk about the pocket clips. I don't know how many messages I've got about the pocket clips. And the pocket clips between these and I know I had a backlash up there. And the 9CR18 models, like the Backlash, yes, they are the same uh, as far as oh, the, the screw holes are set up the same, same spacing. So, yes, you can swap them back and forth. No, you can't get a hold of Wii and get one pocket clip or the other. They will not sell you a pocket clip because that would just be ridiculous going back and forth on that. Uh, plus, yeah. it'd be ridiculous. There's been several people that want the titanium one on the 9CR18 models. Okay, well, if you go to Wii and you ask them for a pocket clip, it costs between 15 and 30 bucks. And yep. so you're going to spend half of what you spent on the knife for a pocket clip? I can't understand that. Yeah, but, uh, I don't think I'd go that far either. But they will, they, they're not selling them anyhow, so it doesn't matter. If you want an over the top clip, you know, get the $42 knife and put the clip wherever you want it or something like that. But the Aquila is a pretty cool little knife. Uh, that's the Aquila? Yeah, that's the Aquila. The one's got the kind of burn. It's like the ignition to me. Yeah, that's, but it, that's what it re resembles. Yeah. Knife. It just, that's if I had to like say what it looked like, that's what I would say. Oh, I don't know. Woodland's tactical. Uh, it, it's just people, people are weird, you know, but, uh, you know, maybe they like the design of the knife. Cause that's something that, you know, people don't think about. There's a lot of times like this backlash is a really, really good design and it's in nine CR 18. You know, I would use that pocket clip because it's what came with it and it works fine. But there's a lot of people out there that they get a design they really, really like. And, you know, they'll spend hundreds of dollars pimping it out. Just just look at all the junk you can get for one of these. I mean, you can take an XM18 at uh, $425 from Hinderer, and you can spend hundreds of bucks. Hundreds and hundreds well, of dollars. I almost did a video on that the other day. To me, though, it, it it's, it's kind of, I don't know, I'm 50-50 on that because... Some things, even the cheaper, not it, sometimes. If like, like you just said, if you really love the design, then and you want to make it your own or custom that nobody else has. That's kind of why I do a lot of modifications to my, you know, certain knives because I want to make it a one of a kind. So I, I feel like you know, it, I kind of I don't understand uh, like doing it to every single knife I own. That's just me, but you know. You have one that you really, really like a lot, and you want to, you know, upgrade it. I don't see any problem. Yeah, you know, and that's the deal. It, it, the knife design that touches somebody isn't always going to be a, a four hundred dollar hinderer. It's it might be this forty three dollar backlash, and they might be willing to spend thirty, forty, fifty bucks on stuff. And hey, I can see that. Why not? And Slicey, you're right. The this is kind of like. Well, you know, it's even more. It's it's like an ignition without the recurve, with a bit taller blade, a bit thicker, and uh, all around a better priced knife for what you're getting. I, I know there's a lot of people that like the uh, oh the ignition 
but it was never a good value to me. It just wasn't. So anyhow, okay, let's go back to Nick. You got some kind of blue thing on yeah. you? Yeah, this is the one I was talking about, Zell, that, that's kind of like the Wii knife that just dropped. Okay. Um, it, it's got the same, and I'm guessing, I don't know who, I think this is, what is it, Tosh Tools or whatever? Tosh, I don't know how to say it. I forgot who made this. Somebody knows. Let me know. It's it's. I see TK on it, and it's got the same little actuation. It's got that same little blade, but it's way. It's a very very tiny little blade, and you got for this one. Like I was saying, it didn't really make sense for this one because it's it it doesn't. It's only staying like that because I I held it like that. But it's got that same spring actuated up. Oh, now it's gonna stay. Usually it pops right back in, and especially if you put any kind of force right there, it's going to pop back, back in. So I don't, I'm not a lanyard guy, but this thing is so tiny that in order to actually use it, you, you got to have something to hold on to back there, or it doesn't really make sense. The, the blade's so tiny on this one. I don't know if that yeah. takes any kind of standard blades or not, but... <laughs> Okay, yeah, I'm going to swap back over to the other camera where I've got the uh, the one from Ferrum Forge. And, you know, that's the Ferrum Forge model. you got a lot more blades sticking out there. And, you know, the, the good and the bad, and I guess it depends on who you are, or these little knives, is they don't have any lock. You slide it forward, and whenever you let go, it springs back. Great if you're going to put it on your keychain. Maybe not so great if you need to cut something and hold it. This one isn't too bad. You put your thumb on it and uh, you can do some things. You can get into your Amazon box or whatever. And the fact that it's using X-Acto blades uh, for the replacement blade, pretty cool. I'm still... Yeah, that's, it. that's what I was excited about because like I said, the one that I have, it. Does, I mean, I could be wrong because I'm not... I don't really know about all the different size X-Acto blades, but... It looks doesn't look like a standard because it's so small. Yeah, I, I'm going to try and put one of the round nose Exacto blades in this one. I just haven't got around to it yet because if it'll use one of the round nose ones, I think this would be a really useful little keychain tool. And since I've seen one now, I am going to get in CAD and see if I can design one that might be able to have a semi lock open. Uh, uh, yeah, see. I wonder if you can make one that that little knob, like if you twisted it, like like kind of like you were unscrewing it, but to the right, to where you know you had a lock, to where you could it's all one handed. You just you know flip it up, like kind of like you're twisting it, and then twist it the other way to unlock. I don't know. I don't know. I'll, I'll have to uh, once I get into CAD, I can do some thinking about it and see what I come up with. But pretty cool little knives. I am. Uh, I, I like seeing the Exacto blade. That is something. You know, the little trapezoidal blades are cool, but the Exacto blades make for a smaller little utility knife. Some of those trapezoidal blade knives are huge. Yeah. Glad to see you, Oaken. Nice to see you in here. We are. Uh, like we said before, we are trying to do this uh, late knife with me and Nick, you know, as often as we can pull it off, and we're going to try to split it up in between here and Instagram so that uh, you guys get a little variety and we get the two different audiences instead of just, you know, one side of things. And also a slightly different format. Whenever we go to Instagram, we get a split screen format, which is kind of cool. And uh, here we've got to swap back and forth. And it's but here. also then with Instagram, you know, you gotta we gotta watch out for our time frames. Right. Then we get the time frame thing at Instagram. So you know it's kind of cool. Uh, an A ray, a bolt action pin, Barry. Uh, that's kind of what I was thinking actually. And speaking of bolt action pins, we'll swap the camera back over. And I think I've got control of the camera now. Staza. It, it was, was running away say, from me okay. there for a minute, but uh, uh, if you guys haven't seen these, and I know you guys know I deal with Wii a lot, but this is one of those times <laughs> that uh, if you find these pins and you like the bolt-action pins, they're, I think Nick told me, 66 68 bucks. 
which is like super yes. cheap for one of these pens. They use standard refills and uh, just buy one if you like these types of pens. Because yeah, especially for all that. Look at all the uh, milling that things got on it. Yeah, and it's all milled up real nice. There's two different versions. One's got some different milling on it. And, uh, you know, just a, a heck of a good deal for one of these things. And, you know, we looked at the Hinderer pen earlier, and they're about the same price as the Hinderer pens, but you don't have to unscrew the cap. And, you know, if you're actually using the pen, that unscrewing the cap can be annoying. What's going on, Skywarp? Let's see. Uh, Frank, I have thought about what you're saying there, the push the button down and release it from the opposite side, but those things are so thin that I don't think that that is going to work out all that well. Uh, I have a plan. We'll see how it works out. Um, I'm setting up. I got all these little multi-tools. I'm setting them up just to talk about them for a sec. All right, man. All right. If you don't have, if you don't, if you don't have nothing to talk about for a second, I was gonna talk about these real quick. No, go for it. I just want. I know uh, Slicey did a, a video on this, and we we both saw uh, Best Damn EDC uh, did a, a big video on all these uh, different utility blades and. Uh, I know I have a lot of use for them, mainly because, just like he said, just like Slicey said, if you have, you know, one of your really expensive knives in your pocket, and instead of trashing it purposely, you could use one of these that has a disposable blade. And I just got this Giltec Ruck in, and it has a lot of potential to be uh, my new favorite guy, especially... If I decide to get the titanium version, it's it's about medium size compared to all these. This is the Rexford Rut. This is the most expensive, and it's kind of absurd for the price, but you're definitely getting some really good quality here, and you're paying for the Rexford name. Um, one thing I like about this one is that it's got the flat head, and it's got your bottle opener because you got to have bottle opener. And then... Um, it's kind of like a frame like push this over and you can slide the blade in and out. And this is a, this and this one are both two hand uh, deployments, but this one you can one hand close it, which is cool. One thing that I like about this ruck over the rest of the, or over these three right here is it's got one hand opening and one hand closing. Uh, the one thing that would make this perfect to me, if, if, it had a pry bar and a flathead, kind of like this right here, and kind of like this guy right here. That's something I use so much, so often, flathead type. So this one definitely has a lot going for it. Super light, it's aluminum, 35 bucks. Mine, this one, I don't know, I think I might have gotten, you know, a, a one that is just not, not that smooth. But I know Brian's was super smooth, pretty much out of box. Maybe mine just needs a little bit more break in. And this thing right here, I, I love this little guy. This is a Gerber, I think, EOS. For the price, like 7 bucks, you can get them at Walmart. And this would be probably one of my favorites, like, all around. There's a problem yeah. with that one, though. Yeah, you have to unscrew this completely to take the blade out. So that that's the huge because all these are easy you know swappable now this is also a gerber with a full-size handle like a full-size knife that if they would have used this mechanism it has this little push spring mechanism where you pull the blade out and lock it back in if they use this mechanism on this they would have something there especially if they did this in titanium or something but we know gerber will never do something like that just because it'd make this a lot lighter i think this is like two two ounces or so but when you're carrying say two other knives with you then it does kind of matter just wondering if this is something that y'all guys carry too or y'all y'all have any use for those or what do y'all think about them i know you both relieved the week right i know you both really the week practice 
Uh, I need a nice little utility to add something to my collection that doesn't have the I'll kill you look to it. My collection definitely leans toward bigger tactical stabby bullet. Yeah. And like I said, like this little guy right here, this rock, 35 bucks. It's it's hard anodized aluminum. It's got um it's got this little um uh, well, I just lost picture Zell on your other okay, there you go. It's got this little spring that acts as tension, and then it's got these little detent balls in here that land in the little things. So you just push push on it. And it's one handed and you just pull it back and it's not coming out of there. It's it stays in there really nice. Thirty five bucks, pretty good option. If you want to upgrade to the titanium version, I think it's like eighty bucks. So you're kind of looking at these two. This is this one right here is the big idea design. I don't know what the name of it is, but you can find these on um Amazon. They don't come with a pocket clip. The guy got it from put that on there. Uh, this one's like 60 bucks. I mean, these are very expensive for what they are. Um, only thing I don't like about this one is, is it has a magnet behind here to keep it from rattling, which I'd rather have the rattle because it's hard to actuate this blade it's, it's compared to the rut. So that's my yeah. thoughts on them. That one you said was 35 bucks. I need to get a link to that one or something because yeah, I'd like to see how the mechanism works in it. Look, um, well, like I was saying, uh, here's a little picture diagram, and what it what it is is, Zell, there's there's a little torsion, I mean, a tension bar right here. See this right yeah. here? That's a little, just a little tension bar. It doesn't have a detent ball on or anything. And what it does is, is put tension on that that blade, and when you push this down, it allows it to go in this front track right there. Yeah, and there's a little there's little detent balls in here to catch to catch the blade, so it okay. catches on one of the detent balls when you push it down. It's a detent ball and allows you to go to the next setting, and then same goes for the retraction. Now mine isn't that smooth yet. Um, I know Slicey's his was like super smooth um, in and out. So mine's getting a little better. I messaged him to see if, you know, if that's normal or not. I know he was having trouble with his uh, Cerakote guy was screwing him or something. So he had to go straight to the hard anodized, which I'm fine with the hard anodized aluminum. Um, I'm interested to check out the titanium version just because I like Ty. Yeah. I agree. We got some stuff to catch up on here. Uh, yeah, let's see. Let's yeah, that see. Outdoors Edge one is, is is pretty cool. I had one, but a friend of mine took it. Okay, so yeah. Let's see here. Hinderer on phosphor bronze washers. No, I have no reason to put the Hinderer on phosphor bronze washers. Uh, I may do it just because you guys keep asking about it, but I am not in any environments where normally where i need to have the phosphor bronze and it is so good on the bearings that i'm happy i have knives with phosphor bronze washers they work fine too but i'm so happy with it it's it's that i don't know honeymoon thing it's i've always wanted an xm18 to work the way it should and i've had two or three i don't know how many of them i've had and they haven't and this one here Whenever it showed up, I pulled it out of the little box, which has gotten better. They still got the freaking crazy popcorn crap in there, but the, at least the box is more properly sized. Tactical peanuts. Tactical, yeah, whatever. Freaking stupid <laughs> stuff. But, uh, the thing was, I pull it out of the box, and I go like that, and it's like, boom. And it's kicking yeah. butt. I and then uh, DLT trading, I was able to get this Warthog scale, and I was like, you know, that's the thing. And, and I am absolutely loving the sheep's foot blade on this thing. And, you know, the Warthog is here to stay. And will I put it on phosphor bronze or Teflon? Yeah, I probably will at some point. But, uh, you know, I, I'm not Shabazz. Shabazz is all whatever Shabazz is. Uh, I like it just the way it is. Well, I would just be interested just to see if there's even a difference with any of them. I mean, I know there's going to be a difference with the washers, but his tolerances are so tight are pretty damn tight I, I would venture to say that between the phosphor bronze and the teflon the only difference is going to be the fall shot 
Yeah, it may be, but you know, it's so good. I don't want to mess it up, man. <laughs> don't no, want to I mean, mess it no up. Point. <laughs> I, I don't, but you, I don't think you, I mean, I don't think it would, it would mess up anything on the action, but I mean, I'm like you when something's rotten so damn good, why well, mess with it? Yeah. And somebody mentioned something about the practice. The practic is that knife that if it's still out there and you want one, get it. Because with this Avivi line coming out of... This practic? I don't... Yeah, have you got a practic there? There we go. We'll switch over to yeah. Nick. He's got a practic. With we in this Avivi line, and uh, they're, they're going to D2 in the Savivi line, and I have this fear that the practic is going to disappear and not have any more runs. I may be completely wrong, but I just have that fear because it looks too much like the uh, Courser and some of the other uh, Sabivi knives, even yeah, though we all know it isn't. Oh. I was noticing just that, you know, it's, it's, I mean, I, 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 I don't know if I'd agree with that, but just so uh, but I mean, you got M390 here, you know. Yeah, and you got a little garbled there, Nick. Uh, the the kid playing Fortnite or whatever is messing you up a little bit. Yeah, well, I think it's where I'm at. Should I should I, should I move to my kitchen? Oh, you're. I I think he's all right, other than the occasional uh, goofy sound. What do you think, guys? Well, I mean, because it won't take me but two seconds to go into the kitchen. If if it's an issue, y'all let me know if uh, it's it's scrambling a lot on y'all end. I love the feel of the Teflon washers and never. Yeah, I mean Teflon. Teflon. I like I like Teflon in certain applications because Teflon has that very um, uh, fluid. I, I never really had that drag feel. Um, oh. I love Teflon, man. I'm right there with you. It feels good. It works good. My problem with the hinderers is out of the ones I had, I never got one that had, yeah, you do have kind of the drunk Robo RoboCop thing going on well, here. Hey, here. I'm, I'm going, I'm going, I'm not, y'all, you keep talking. I'm moving to the other room. All right, man. It, I, I can't hear y'all. It's going crazy. Okay. Uh, the, the, the Teflon is great. The only problem I have with the Teflon is the knife is a whole lot harder to deal with, keeping everything centered. And maybe it was because I had earlier versions, because the newest uh, Teflon washer one I had was a Gen 4, I believe. So, little older knives. But whenever you pick up, like I've got on the table right now, or you pick up one of these, this is an older Strider, and it's on phosphor bronze. And this thing is squared and centered all the time. And, you know, and this thing's kind of scary. It's, no, well, it's a little tight right now. Maybe I've, usually this thing will just fall closed on you. I may need to clean it a little bit. Uh, you know, and then this one, I, I, I'm, I'm kind of happy about this one. I was able to get a hold of one of these, an SMF also. Pretty happy about that. Yeah, uh, Nick or Staz hey, has I, had that problem. And Woodland Tactical, this is what you what? Do out there in California. This right here, this will get all your liberal buddies moving. <laughs> yeah, until they see that, that blade. Oh, come on. It's only that big. It's cute. Yeah, but everything in California causes cancer. Well, yeah, I know, and I'm sure that Hellhound Blades cause cancer, too. <laughs> or, or, you know, UTX-70 Hellhound Blades probably cause minor perforations. Yeah. Okay, you are sounding much better. Yeah, it, it was because where my knife room is, it's the furthest place from my router, and it's got a door, so it was blocking everything from the router. Okay, that, that's cool. We need to get you a Cat5 cable ran in there. Yeah, well, I, I think I actually had the setup from my old old system. I just didn't want to do all that tonight. All uh, right, Dan. Oh, wait, let me, I'm going to be right back. I'm going to grab my iPad so I can see what y'all are saying. All right, man. Yeah, the MP want to be cool. I don't have one of those. 
Uh, and now that we're doing the Gen 6 stuff, I'm going to kind of wait around till Rick gets some of the, some more of the Gen 6 stuff out. Oh, yeah. Staz is a baller when it comes to this stuff. He's got a knife room. You know, I, I've got the bunker, but it's just, just a basement. And great. What happened there? There we go. My big old screen went black, guys. I thought maybe we was all having technical difficulties tonight, but uh, it came back. There you go. Is the Infidel that, that little bench made? Don't, don't they make a little, uh, the two inch blade or 1.9 inch blade uh, automatic? Because, you know, I know that Kershaw makes one. And if I lived in California, I'd have one of those just for fun because it's completely legal. You know, it'd be much better than, I don't know, where, what, where did I put it? It's over here. Uh, my wife, living here in Missouri, she carries one of these around uh, in a regular, just a drop point blade because she loves the fact that it's so small. And, yeah, I'm right there with her. Pretty freaking cool. Uh, is there anything you guys want to talk about while Staza is, well, I don't know where Staza went. He just, like, disappeared on us, man. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah, I don't keep track of Benchmade's stuff anymore. They kind of, I should, but they haven't wowed me in a long time since, I, I guess the Mini Crooked River is kind of interesting, but other than that, they really hadn't wowed me. Uh, the dog tooth. People have asked about this, and I know we talked about it in the last one, those of you that were with us for the last uh, late night, but uh, I've had several of Brad Zinker's Boker designs, and they're good. But this one with Mastrop, Brad, and we doing the manufacturing is better. There are some things that they miss that you get out of the Boker, you get out of one of Brad's customs where they... Uh, Oh, they chamfer all the holes and they're all either anodized a different color or polished. And I kind of miss that because that's kind of a nice touch. But as a knife, overall, this is way better. Uh, when can I buy a Zell design? Well, I just talked to Wii earlier and they are, they have everything produced for the Roxy, the uh, two and five eighths inch, the smaller version of this one. They have everything produced, and they're getting ready to do finishes on yes. the Roxy. And whenever, and I don't know why you didn't buy that Zinker Slicey, because that's like right up your alley, man. Which but one? The uh, Dog Tooth. Dog Tooth? Yeah, yeah. That, that is a really cool knife. But it's one of those that... Uh, once I've done a little bit of video about it, if you want one, I'm probably not going to keep it around because even though it is super cool, well, uh, I'm I'm going to give in. Your hands. Yeah, I'm going to give in and buy one of Brad's customs next year. I mean, because, they're all, they're not bad price at all. <laughs> right. And uh, anyhow, so the Roxy is supposed to be out in December. This knife should be in production in the next few days. So it should be out possibly December 2. This is the malware. And if if everything works out right, there is going to be a super badass model of this one. It will be all black, black stone washed blade, uh, and it will have a bronze anodized backspacer and a bronze anodized pocket clip. You know, if that one comes to fruition. I'm not sure that it will, but uh, we've talked about it with them. So if that does... That will be a uh, super cool one. Uh, T. Willie, yes, I have. Me too. That's my, hey. my I'm, oh, I can't wait for that one. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Slicey, I, I'm not going to be able to hold any of the Wii knives. They will go to dealers. Uh, Seth and I will get one apiece, and the rest will go to dealers. And not much I can do from there. So... If you want one, you're gonna have to. Just, it's uh, not. It's not gonna be a limited production, huh? So the first run will be. The first run will only be 300 knives. Oh shoot me! Are they gonna do a pre-order for them? Or no, they don't do pre-orders, huh? Uh, it, that will depend on the dealers. Blade HQ, Knife Center, 
uh, White Mountain, Smoky Mountain, etc. Where well, there you go, uh, Slicey. And Mountain. I would, I will probably be in contact with Ben whenever I uh, know that the knives are coming, and hopefully we can get something set up with the uh, Blade HQ at the very least to get some pre-order action going on. Uh, but uh, I do know that the first run of those is 300 knives, so pretty small run, really. Um, somebody, Barry asked, what is your opinion? And we're screaming at you first. What is your opinion on the line still roundhead? <laughs> uh, I like I like the roundhead. Um, I, only, I only have a few uh, slip joints that I carry in my rotation, and the roundhead is one of them. I mean, yeah, 390. I don't own a round head, and I won't own a round head. Yeah, the only only thing I wish I wish that well, mine I have the first the first version of it, and the back sprint, the pull and stuff was kind of weak on it, um, and I wish it had like a forward choil to keep you from, you know. Well, and there you go. That right, <clears throat> right there is why I won't own a round head. It doesn't have anything to do with the knife. The knife is great. It has to do with the uh, with the not really the lack of toil. It's the pull on it. It's so light, in my opinion, compared to a UKPK or uh, this. You know, swap cameras back again, or this little uh, Best Tech knife. I, can't ever remember what that thing's called. Gen Z? The Gen Z or something like that. Uh, no, the malware is being made by Best Tech. Uh, we, Todd Knife and Tool, we are not going to be beholden to one uh, manufacturer. Over the next several months, you're going to see Todd Knife and Tool knives from several different manufacturers. Uh, we're trying to keep them spread out so that we aren't mean to you guys and have them all show up at once because, you know, that would be kind of cruel. And, and Dave, that's what I hear is that the newer round heads are tighter. I got a hold of one. It was one of the very first ones, and it wasn't. It was just, I mean, it wasn't bad, It was, but it wasn't in there with what I was used to, the case and the old timers and all those that were pretty stiff in the back spring. And uh, I have this thing about cutting my finger off. And I like my fingers. That's why I have locks on my knives or these 50-50 choils. So that's kind of the thing. Uh, Dub, I don't know on the Roxy. Uh, my guess is somewhere between two and 300 bucks. I know that's a super wide range, but that's the best I can give you right now. Uh, because we hasn't told us pricing yet. All right, Nick, you're up. What you got going on over there? Now that um, we can see your desk all nice and clean. <laughs> Wait, what were you saying? Oh, earlier it was kind of all garbledy. It wasn't awful, but it definitely wasn't good. What is that scale up there to the right of your you like that? awful knife? That right there? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. What, what you like that? This is my new Bosker. No, I'm just kidding. Um, I had it's a titanium pilar scale that I picked up, and I decided to try my hand at carving. So I carved it up, and like, let me just show you what it looks like on there. I'm actually think I'm gonna sell it because, I mean, I you know I already had the micarta one, and I I just picked this up because it was fairly cheap, and. Like I said, I wanted to see how hard it was to carve up titanium and then do some anno on it. I did a green base and then purple underneath. So what are you carving it up with? Um, a combination of my grinder and uh, Dremel. Okay, okay. And then do you see I'm this one? It. Yeah, you're doing something a little tighter there. Yeah, this one was strictly Dremel um, with one of them... Um, what do you call it? The chainsaw sharpening bits. Oh, okay. And basically just take it and whack, 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 and then go the other way. In no particular pattern. And then with this one, I, I use the, uh, the edge of my one by 30 blades belt 
Oh, okay. Yeah, looking good, though. And Barry, uh, thanks for screaming at me again, buddy. I love it. <laughs> and uh, the UK PK is a very good knife. And if you're looking for something a little cheaper, um, you can get the... What is that brand? The brand, the other Spiderco brand. It's all the bird. Bird, yeah, that's what yeah, it is. Bird. Uh, bird, bird, bird. A bird version of that. They both have very strong back strings with 50-50 coils. So they're just, you know, they're not the prettiest things, but they're sure great little knives. Yeah, that's. I think that's my favorite is when you have that 50-50 coil just because, you know, you have that confidence of if you do something stupid like, I mean, and a lot of people were like, oh, well, if you're cutting right, no. I was in a rush at work, and I was using my, um, it was another Spider Co., the Pingo. Mm-hmm. And I was, we were in a rush, and I had the Pingo in my pocket for some reason, oh, because was, it was light, and I was cutting through some thick cardboard, and I wasn't thinking when I pulled the knife up, it was still stuck in the cardboard, and luckily... I had my hand, my fingers on side of it, or I would chop, chop my finger. Oh man, yeah, you know, and that's my thing. I, I used for a long time, you know, your Swiss Army knives and your various knives of that sort. Whenever I was a kid, and man, I always had ended up not from doing stupid things, but just whatever. I would end up with little cuts on my fingers, and then one time. I had somebody surprise me, and I jerked around backwards, and I ended up, I, th- I don't know, I may still have a scar from that one. Nah, it looks like it's finally gone, but it was right there on that knuckle. One of those two index finger knuckles. Yeah, I have some and, of them, too. <laughs> and I had a scar for years over that. And, you know, it was your standard old uh, Swiss Army knife, probably a Boy Scout branded one, I don't know. But it just... And that's whenever my dad gave me a uh, buck a squire. Why? Because it had a lock on it, and I wouldn't cut myself up with it. <laughs> the squires, I like that. That's an, I like that one in the 55 are probably my two favorites. Yeah, I've seen they line. come out with the 112 with uh, uh, better steel see, in it. You didn't see my review of that? No, I didn't. Did you do one on uh, the 112? Yeah, go watch my the Swing and a Huge Miss review. Oh, okay. Yeah, I did. Never mind. I was about to yeah. say, because I, I have it right here on side of me. I'm returning it tomorrow if you want to see it. <laughs> no. I'll no, tell you, it was, it was such a shame because that knife had potential to be an absolute all-star. Yeah, I mean, the 112 is the right size. It's an easy carry knife. And that one was Mike Carter, right? Yeah. Yeah, that, that, that should have been an all-star. Yeah, and I'm 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 thinking, and I'm not going to take up for him, but I'm thinking the the centering issue I think had a lot to do with the micarta. I don't know. I haven't heard anybody talk about them yet, besides the one I had, um, being that it was it had no liners and micarta, you know, tends to flex and it they had gaps. But I think the thing besides it rubbing against the handle scale that just totally blew my mind was is. For me, the 112 and the 110, what drew me to those as a kid and still to this to this day is that beautiful curved clip they got. You know that nice and oh, yeah. rounded clip. Well, on yeah. these new this, these new versions, uh, it's called the EDC Slims or whatever Pro Line. They went with a straight clip, like straight, like with a ruler. No, you can't do that, man. Like completely just destroyed the design, and I don't know, it just killed it for me. That is what a buck clip looks like. Yeah, look, Dave saying, "Is that what you're talking about, Dave?" The way they completely uh, took the, the the tried and true design of the the 112 and destroyed it. Yeah, catch you later, Brian. Have a good night, man. Have a good one, Slicey. Yeah. I mean, I had them all on camera that night, and I mean, see that that's just such a sexy profile. Oh yeah, I mean, it's classic and everything. And I, I've seen the one ten lightweight. I have not handled one because, and, and this is me being traditionalist here. Believe it or not, me being traditionalist in, in my world, a, a buck one ten. This is buck one ten. Yeah, and 
whenever you make it a lightweight, it's no longer a buck 110 in my world. Now, it's fine if it is in your world. It just isn't in mine. Yeah, I, I do think they should have called it something else, you know, because um, the the one ten is iconic. It's you know it, it, that's its its own thing. It should have either been like the one ten two. I don't yeah. know, but it should have never just been called a lightweight. Yeah, because that I mean, like I said, I'm not normally a traditionalist, but the one ten, the one twelve, the Squire, uh, they all hold a special place for me. And They're let's... selling what at Walmart, Frank? The lightweight? Yeah, I saw that. They sell the Buck 110 lightweight. So hold on. I got that one. Hold on. I'm going to grab mine. Hold on. All right, man. All right. So what do we got here? Got some. Got that thing it just keeps trying to get a little more screen time. Probably deserves it. This thing over here is always trying to get screen time because I probably because I've had it a long time and never reviewed it. That's why, because you know, and, and for you guys that can, these UTX eighty fives are just super duper carrying little knives. Take up no room, fit in there. Uh, yeah, I agree. It's Woodland Tactical. Perfect little just, EVC. That's why I just didn't even look at them because. They're, they're not for me. They're, I, and I know I'm, I'm supposed to be doing stuff for everybody else, but sometimes if a knife just doesn't talk to me, I just I, it's no good for me to put it on camera. You know, like I can sit and talk about this Medford Praetorian that a bunch of you think is a silly knife for a very long time because this Genesis series or Genesis size, I actually love it. To me, it is a great hard-used knife that still cuts pretty damn well for what it is. So... You know, one of those things. Uh, definitely not a lightweight, though. I forget this you thing's know, like six or seven ounces. Is that, have you, did you ever have the lightweight 110? No, huh? No, no. I wasn't going to do it. Look on look on my screen. Look at that. Yeah. Have, you see, have you ever seen? It looks like they, whenever they was testing the um, the blade to the lock, they had it. They had it still molting. <laughs> molted steel yeah, and it smushed weird. itself <laughs> and that's how they all were very odd but yeah, a very that's... positive listen to this very positive listen very positive oh, on this one and a good snap um i don't understand though they came out with this one and then they had this the new series with the pocket clip and stuff i mean and you, it's the same knife with with uh thumb stud in a pocket clip and they still called it lightweight 110 yeah I, I don't get the bucks deal there you know the one the 112 and the esquire those knives could have used a pocket clip <laughs> but yeah I, I don't want to see them in a lightweight and have them called the same thing but you know we're, we're kind of running over that and yeah guys this orange is just on that uh utx 85 uh that I, I will admit this. I actually paid extra, bought it at E-Knives, and gave probably 20 bucks over what a normal UTX-85 costs to get the orange. But, you know, sometimes you just got to do it. And uh, I'll tell you what. Um, I've been carrying this this uh, buck. Fair Another buck, buck, yeah. And I'll tell you what. Uh, more and more. I mean, it's got one of the best actions out of pretty much any almost almost as good as my um my millet torrent it just has a different action it, this is more of a guillotine drop shot i like mm -hmm. my torrent my torrent has that controlled drop shot right but at first this choil you know a lot of their choils just seem odd and this one as skinny of a knife as this was, whenever I first put it in hand before I started using it, I was like, oh, no, that's terrible. But the first time I went break break down some boxes and I was cutting was cutting some wood chips off of uh, something I glued and this choil, it, it made a lot more sense once I started cutting with it. Oh, yeah, they always do. I, I In fact, I've parlayed with some people today about choils and fussing about them. And I have got to the point where choils, 
are almost something that I want to see on any knife that is about three inches of blade or more. Uh, and, and I'll give up. I'll give up the little bit of extra cutting edge just to have that choil to make it comfortable and better to use. Yeah, I think only thing that, that frustrates me is when they don't commit to the choil and you have a big sharpening choil. That just it, because it, it, it bugs me, and so many of my OCD starts going crazy, and you wasted you wasted edge for something that you can't use as a forward finger choil. It just makes no sense. But on the same token, I rather see that than a wonky edge termination. Yeah, I agree with you there. You know, I I like whenever there is enough there to make a finger choil, though, and and that's just. Well, it's something, you know, you see it in our knife designs with Todd Knife and Tool. And I've got to the point where I pick up a knife and, uh, you know, like, say this, you Shaw, pick that guy up and I immediately choke up on that guy. And it's probably got something to do with, I, I carry generally three, seven, five to four inch knives. And you want to be a little closer to that blade tip on that big a knife. Yeah. And uh, I do wish Master Up, I have talked actually with mass drops uh coordinator for products like that and uh they have at least shrank the name uh i've tried to get them to do an actual you know like medford's got their you know medford thing on there which actually looks pretty cool or we puts the, th the six lines on the pivot i've tried to get them to do something like that and it hasn't went through yet well but they did shrink it a lot they, they did shrink it a lot uh, look, I, I would like, like oh, wait a minute, here much. we go. It was yeah. like um, half the blade, and now it's it's that. Yeah, and they did shrink it, which is good. But uh, I, I've tried, I've talked to, like I said, their, their guy, and I've tried to get him to go to a logo. But uh, he, he, uh, somebody above him just won't do it. But yeah, because look at that. <laughs> it's half yeah. his blade. Yeah, that on the what? What's that? The Falcon. The Falcon. Yeah. Yeah, that was awful. But uh, now, one thing, and uh, if anybody out there can get some clarification on Mass Drops warranty, I looked all over their site uh, yesterday, trying to find the warranty on the knives, and I couldn't because I've heard conflicting stories about what the actual warranty is. Uh. So if well, anybody I talked can... to Jonas uh, about three hours ago, and something about that, um, uh -huh. and basically it's unclear. Uh, it, as far as this knife right here, the Falcon, it's supposed to be uh, taken care of by Ferrum Forge. That's what Jonas said, and, and he said they're they're in the process. He said of finding a dedicated uh, service person for their mass drop exclusives in my eyes if they don't have one they shouldn't be producing them <laughs> well i agree and you know i deal with we and the, i hear it from we all the time they have problems uh with the mass drop knife <laughs> you i haven't read dave's comment <laughs> no i did not get to read dave's comment yet read that I, don't, I couldn't find it. You're going to have to send me a link or tell me what he said. No, Dave just said, he said, I ordered something from Mass Drop and the package showed up empty. <laughs> well, yeah, I, I agree, Dave. He said it took him forever to figure out who to complain to first. That is something with Mass Drop that has really got under my skin. Because, you know, for me, it's not a big deal because I happen to have emails to people in power there, if you will. Yeah. So if I have a problem, I can pick up the phone and call the people in power or I can email them. It's not a big deal. But what about you guys? You know, it, it's not, I mean, I'm not going to yeah. say, it, it's not fair that I can do that, but I'm going to take advantage of it. But it's, you know, I can't do it for everybody. But uh, if you can't figure out who to talk to, it's such a problem. And it shouldn't be a problem. You know, with most companies, you know, like uh, take this Medford knife I've got on the table, for instance. If I have a problem with this Medford knife, I call Greg, literally. 
you call Greg. Anybody calls Greg that has one and has a problem with it. It's not some deal where you have to go through 12 layers of people to get there. If you have a problem with a Wii knife, you email We Customer Service wherever you're at, Europe, United States, or whatever. And within a couple of days, you've got a response from them. Same thing with Best Tech. Same thing with uh, all your major knife companies. Even CRKT, who has awful customer service, will at least email you back. Yep. Yeah, I think that's uh, something that is, if they don't fix soon, it's going to hinder them because they're eventually going to get a knife that is plagued with problems. And what are they going to do? I don't know. Well, Uh, I can tell you this. Whenever I talked to their representatives at Blade Show Atlanta, they wanted to do a Todd knife and tool knife. Uh, I don't know that, in fact, I have a early production version from a different company of that knife. This is the one they wanted to do. And uh, whenever it came down to it and the time frame that they asked me to start talking with them and sending them drawings and stuff, Seth and I chose not to. And the only reason we chose not to do a mass drop made knife was because of them not having all their customer service stuff figured out. Because mm, that's I don't, scary. Well, I don't want our Todd knife and tool name on a knife and then the these guys uh dub if you got it, email service USA at we dot com. That is the way to get uh, service for we stuff. So yeah. that is the uh you know the issue because we had talked to their representatives. They wanted the knife, they wanted to do it, and we were like, eh, if we can't guarantee service for you guys out there for the customers we're not going to do it because it's just plain ugly yeah so you know we've got designs out there with several other companies that you're going to be seeing and one of the things that we've been doing as we talk to these companies is how do you do customer service if they can't give us a good answer on how they do customer service we're like okay well you know whenever you get that figured out come back and talk to us you know we're small fish but you know, but especially when it when you're you're building your brand, that's the last thing you want is somebody to drop the ball on one of your designs. Well, yeah, that's kind of the thing, and you know, and we've been on that end of it. Well, with some of the other companies out there, uh, and you know, not be able to get things fixed, and we know what it feels like. So yeah. we don't want want anybody to have our stuff and be in that that hole, you know. I'll tell you, you know, to me, something that I scratch my head and I just don't understand is, for instance, companies like Buck and Benchmade that rely solely on their warranty. That's ugly. Why not just do it right the first time? Yeah, that is a problem, too. Now, and I do want to see a Todd Knife and Tool with Spider Co. If anybody knows Sal or Eric <laughs> and has some influence with them, I mean, Look I know up. both of them, but I don't have any influence with them. So if you somebody out there has got some influence with them, we would love to talk to Sal and Eric about doing something because we think that our design philosophy and their design philosophy, one, works out pretty good together because there are certain elements that we do and they do that uh, we could oh, we could do a heck of a collab. That would be awesome. Uh-huh. And you're right, Dave. We don't want to look like the bad guys. That's the whole reason. We want the, the experience with our knives to be great for you guys. And so we're trying to be somewhat careful about it as we move forward. And, Let's see. and we're yeah, like try way off. Right. Yeah, Woodland, I, I've, I've, I've had a... Uh, I have their Cut Jack 3.5 inch, the Modus, and a I checked out all their blades at Blade Show. I'll tell y'all, when they finally, and they, they said they were releasing it in, I don't know, 2019, but whenever they come out with their ant lock, that's going to be a, a one to watch out for. If they do it like they had the protos, that is a very interesting, uh, kind of like a, somewhat like an axis lock, but it's different by a lot of means. It's It's... A pretty amazing lock, and the guy who invented it is some he's a custom knife maker or something, ant something. That's definitely something I can't wait to actually 
get my hands on when they come out. I agree. Wanted in BG10. And, and you know. they, yes, we'll have to have round holes instead of slots. We'll have to give up on the slots. Because, you know, that wouldn't be Spider Co ish. But, uh, and no, no, no VG10, Dave. You know better than that. <laughs> and yeah, yeah, Oak, and the ant log I think is going to be interesting. Now, I do have something that I want to say about Still Will. First off, they're making good stuff. Unfortunately, good stuff isn't good enough now. Yeah. It just isn't. Uh, because you've got We Knife Company making these. You've got Best Tech making this stuff. You've got uh, Steel, or not Steel Will, what is the Rake out there making good stuff. You've got all these other companies filling all those voids with knives that have more features or just plain have more personality than the Steel Will knives. And uh, it, it's as much as I like those knives, especially the Modus and the Intrigue. Well, that's behind. why you saw. Them, you, that's why you, you saw them. They were the talk of the town when they first came out, but then they that's they stopped right there. They said, "Oh, let's make a G10 version. Oh, let's make a titanium G10 version." It's kind of like Buck making fifty one tens. Yeah, I mean. Yeah, and you've got Tangram, and I I talked to the U.S. guy for uh, um, who's a parent Kaiser, and I've listened to his philosophy about Tangram, and it's solid, and they're going to make it hard whenever they're running good steel. That Acuto 440 is just as good as the 9CR here, nearly as good as some of the D2 stuff. They're making it hard. Uh, all these companies are making it hard to uh, make inexpensive knives and really make them inexpensive. And that's where Steel Will's at. Whenever you can buy this from Civivi for forty two fifty, and you've got bearings and perfect centering and a flipper that rockets out and good ergonomics and design, and you can spend a little bit more and get a best tech with D2. And, yeah, it's, it's just tough. And still, Will should be afraid. And I have not seen the Blade Warms 2018 knives, uh, T. Willie. I do not uh, frequent Blade Forums for self-protection reasons. T. Willie, if you want a good buck knife, go to SK Blades on Instagram. He has, like, I have the Marksman. He has nothing but exclusives of, like, some of the popular models, like the Marksman the one tens, the the um squire and he has them they're all in like my marksman's an S thirty five VN G ten. Absolutely love it. Quality control seems to be a lot better being that they're exclusives for his company. So Yeah, if you're into Buck Knives, SK Blades is great because And he's super cool. Uh yeah, and they do the one, or not the one ten. They they do the marksman and S thirty five VN with a hollow ground blade. I mean, how yes. much cooler can you be? Yeah, I'm gonna have to, whenever I get done uh, with my review on and testing of that one, I'm gonna have to send it your way, Zell, because it's 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 now that they fixed the hollow grind to where it has some somewhat of a distal taper to it. It's a lot better. Yeah, is it is it somewhat thin behind the edge? Uh, it's it's. Uh, yeah, it's not bad. It's um about it's about the original size. It's, it's like twenty four thousand. So okay, that's, that's cool then. Was. That's freaking great. Yeah, that's what your original one was. Yeah, I think twenty four thousand. They did a good job on it. But that first exclusive that they tried to do, oh, they had awful. no no distal taper to it whatsoever, and it was like thirty two thousand behind the edge. It was a wedge. Well, you know, there's something to that, and it's something that. You know, whenever we talk about knives and all this stuff, all these little things, it's all a bigger picture that, if, you know, somebody like this SK Blades guy had to learn. Uh, it's it's not something that just comes automatic because I've been making knives and doing the reviewing and all this stuff. There's so many things you learn 
And then you watch other reviewers and you're like, oh my God, he just said that. And not you, Nick, because uh, I try to inform you of all those things whenever I can. What? <laughs> but uh, you, you're like, oh my goodness, he just said that. He doesn't understand that this can't happen because of this or, you know, whatever uh, it is. Yeah. And, and, and it's, uh, I don't know. But, you know, the SK Blaze guy, he had a little bit of a learning curve, but, you know, he's got it. Yeah, I mean, and I don't I don't know if, I mean, I don't even think that was an issue. His issue, I think it was just Bucks, you know, trying to do it a certain way. Oh, and it might, it might have been. You know, because I don't a... think you have that much um, say-so as far as exactly how you want everything ground and everything. Well, you should I, be I could able be to. wrong. I don't know. I've never had one. <laughs> I've never had an exclusive done for me. Believe well, I not. can I can tell you it's actually a pretty cool process. Oh, I, I would love to be able to do that. Uh, if anyone has any laying around, find me. Ruin the scales on my marksman. <laughs> does anybody have you talking about does somebody have some spare marksman scales lying around? <laughs> Yeah, send it back only... to Buck. They'll fix it for you. Yeah, they will. Seriously. No, Put it in no a box. Joke. Send it to Buck. They'll fix it. Hey, I want to show you something real quick, Zell. Look on the screen and tell me. Uh, okay, this uh, Nitro V, is it pretty corrosion resistant? It is supposed to be. Depends on nitrogen heat treat. Based, you would think a nitrogen-based steel would be pretty corrosion resistant. But look at this, and this isn't anything to do with corrosion or anything. Look, can you see that on the tip? Do you see that? Uh, almost looks like a bent tip. It's got yeah. like a dark spot. I'm, I don't have good lighting in here, but it's on both sides. I don't know what in the world. Almost looks like it got stabbed into a tree trunk and left yeah. there for a week. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know enough about Nitro V. I know it's supposed to be highly stain resistant, and it's supposed to be one of the better uh, of the nitrogen steels for holding an edge. And I haven't, I really haven't went out and used the Perpetua like I intended, so I need to get on that. Yeah, I'm, I'm working on it too. You know, I, I have these things that happen, like this Life? showed up. <laughs> oh, I just noticed that. And, you know, whenever things like this show up, that's a beauty. Or things like that show up. That is it, SMF or SMG? SMF. SMF. You know, I, I always get the SMF if I can. I know. That's why I said never mind. <laughs> and, you know, this one is from the current batch. And, oh, well, you know me. I like the Striders. Now I'm going to talk about Strider politics. But uh, I like the shape and the, the ergonomics of the SMF and the SNG. But uh, the SMF is my Sweet favorite. Spot. Yeah. And I was able to finally get myself a user in one of these newer uh, SMFs. Yeah, if I could find a, a good user, like, in the new format of the SNG for trade or something, I think I would do it. Looks I've like got they got one. the tip on that one, huh? Yeah, but yours is not not a cheap one. Well, yeah, you know. You know, there it is against the old one. Yeah. Just, That's a uh, CC no. though, right? Yeah, this is a CC. This is the newer aluminum one. Uh, I have not handled a smooth criminal from Medford. However, I am going to talk to Mr. Medford tomorrow and see if I can get my hands on one. What uh, is that? It is their button lock. Oh, I listened yeah. to Greg tell me about his button lock, and I'm going to try. I'm going to see if he's got any. He they sold out so quick. I, I want to see what the uh, lead time is on one because I need to uh, try their PVD that they're putting on their blades now. They changed to a new PVD, and uh, that's the black coating on the blades. Yeah. And no, Strider is not out of business. Strider Knives is out of business. Yeah, they I, just smaller batches now. Mick Strider, see if you, let's see. I've still got my screen up there. If you look at this older one, it says Strider, right? And it is the, nearly the same design. Pivot's a little different and stuff. But if you look at this one, it says M Strider. 
they've also shrank the font a little bit. That's kind of cool. I hadn't noticed that yet. And yeah, and they they got a lot of little bitty nice things done to the new ones. Yeah, and so the deal with the Striders is I don't know about all the legal mumbo jumbo that made them have to shut down production, general production, but Mick himself <laughs> is involved in all these small batches. And yeah. you are getting better knives. Now, they're, and, and this is going to sound awful. Some of you are going to be mad at me for saying that. Uh, they are not to the consistency of a Medford. The Medford TI models have a consistency that, uh, well, Greg should be proud of. Uh, I tried over two or three blade shows and some other places. I have tried dozens and dozens of the TI models, and they always have great, ac well, they're tight phosphor bronze action, but they don't have lock stick. If they do, it's very minute. Every Strider I have ever had, whenever you first get it, it has an amount of lock stick to it. Now, it yeah. works out over time. Uh, this one, whenever it first showed up, I did have to break the lock tight that Mick Strider put on it and tighten the pivot up a little bit because it was a little loose. And I've had to work through a little bit of lock stick. So, you know, they are... Uh, it's much better than getting one of these new, though. The older ones, oh my goodness, you were working at it for a while to get these things broke in. Yeah. Speaking of, mine's still going. It's a little bit over a month now. But All right, so what we got? Kind of what did um, Blade Banter, Dave, what, what was listed available on their site for 290 bucks? They are okay. He's talking about smooth criminals. They are listed oh, on the site. I thought you were talking about Strider. I was like, no, <laughs> no way. But <laughs> here's the deal with ordering off of Medford's site. Whenever you make an order on Medford's site, they accept the order. Then they send you an email back, and you have to reply to that email approved. And in that email, it'll tell you what the lead times are for the knife that you uh, purchased. That's pretty you know, cool. So. And he will let lead times get out to 12 months, I believe. And then after that, he won't take orders. 12 months is stretching it. Yeah, I agree. But uh, I think Greg is a smart businessman. And I think whenever he says 12 months, that really means something more like six months. Yeah. He's just giving himself fudge factor to always make the customer happy. Yeah. So they broke before they broke in. Oh. Um. Uh, yeah, see. some of the Striders are sixteen hundred plus bucks, yeah, and the detent on months. the Medford, Medford's detent is good. There's not a problem there. Which 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 one is it talking about? You're talking oh, about oh the Praetorian the Genesis. No, you got a Medford there? I got the, produc the production. Oh, yeah, you got the big daddy there. Yeah. That's a full size mofo. Medford. The big, big boy. The suck of the beast. It is. You know, that one, in my opinion, that's like a back pocket knife, man. Yeah, it's kind of like this just reminds me of my Cold Steel 4 Max. It's just something you got to carry in your back pocket. It's just too, too chunky. Yeah. I was really surprised with those production Praetorians, though. They cut well for as crazy as they are. Yeah. Just as long as you're not trying to cut something super thick, but I mean, you shouldn't, shouldn't be having those expectations for a hard-use knife. Well, you know, and that's it. Uh, the crazy thing is this, uh, that knife and this Praetorian Genesis are around 20 thousandths behind the edge. With and, those nice hollow grinds. And they're hollow ground. This uh, Strider that I just picked up, uh, it's a really nice knife, but it's just under 30 thousandths behind the edge. It's really? Yeah. I thought somebody said that they had started thinning those guys out. Well, that is thinner. <laughs> yeah, but 
I don't know why I thought I was watching one of Nero Nas' videos and I could have sworn what he was saying is S and G was like I don't know, in the twenty that like twenty four thousands behind the edge. Well and it might be. I'll grab the the calipers over here. But uh I pretty sure I measured it earlier. No, I, I, I believe you because Yeah, it's my, right around thirty. Mine's right at 30, Oh wait, wait, wait. It, wrong one. I'm I'm measuring the wrong thing. I was in millimeters. Well, maybe I was wrong. I must have had some I picked up the wrong calipers or something. All right. So I lied. We'll go back over to my screen for a second and we'll stick the uh calipers up here. Oh, can you met me at Blade Show? And I was what? wrong. I was way wrong. There you go, Nick. I apologize, Oaken. I was running around like a cat with my head chopped off. As well. Uh, yeah, he was. Uh, Blade Show, guys, we always have these big ideas for Blade Show. Nick and I both, or Staza and I both, and we never, ever get to execute those things. Oh, yeah. I had, like, I thought I had a perfect plan, <laughs> and... It diminished, and I feel bad because, like, I've met a few of y'all out over there, but my memory since my accident's already terrible, so I, I can't remember who I met. So it really sucks unless I was on video with you. That's uh, I, I really bums me out because <laughs> yeah. I can't remember. We do the best to meet as many as we can. Now, usually at the shows like that, we sponsors me, so... If you're looking for me, I'm not always, but fairly regularly, I'm at the Wii booth because, you know, they're paying my way. So I'm going to do some work for them. Yeah. Zell, I'm probably going to have to tap out in a second. My phone's about to die. All right, man. We can do that. Uh, there was something I saw just a moment ago that I wanted to pull up here, and I don't remember what. Oh, yeah. We have that giveaway coming. Yes. And yes. Scout Leather Company. And. I'm going to bring the hey, rabbit out here. You, you, you do that. I'm going to grab something, too, that I want to show for that. Scout Leather Company has been okay. gracious. Yeah, no problem, man. They've been gracious enough to offer up some of their drivers. And over in the box, if you saw that on Instagram earlier, the picture of the box, inside that box, there's a set of bits for these guys. Uh, so... I have a couple of their drivers for you guys. They also uh, anted up with a couple of their uh, EDC trays and some of their pocket protectors. So some cool stuff from Scout Leather Company. Really appreciate Joe over there hooking us up. And the giveaway is going to be coming. Uh, we had another minor setback. Uh, Staza may have to be in the hospital for a couple of days more stuff to do with his prior injuries as most of you know about and uh because of that and it being probably this weekend we're going to uh probably wait till after he's recovered from that but it should be a quick recovery he's telling me like six seven days yeah so as soon as if it happens so yeah i'll let him know so we'll probably wait till after he's done with that to start the giveaway. And now I'm going to hand you over to Nick, and I'm going to go see if I can find something else. There you go, Nick. Yeah, this is just um, another little teaser of uh, something for the giveaway coming soon. Did it swap screens yet? I don't think it swaps screens. <laughs> well, if it happens to swap screens, I'll, I'll show you all what I'm talking about. Giselle, up oh, there it goes. We got our good buddy, uh, Doss Offenmere, to send two wallets. And these are both wallets that will only be um, this one and this beauty right here. These two will only be available during Black Friday. And they're only going to be discounted that at that time too. We're going to leave uh, links and everything. I think they're like they're going to be twenty percent off only on Black Friday. And I wish y'all could feel this because this is wax right here, and it has the coolest feeling, and it's the coolest looking thing. This is the top sider, I think it is. 
Um, nice, very minimal uh, carry. And then one of my all-time favorites, the gun deck. This is what I carry. And uh, this is in, I think it's Buttero leather. And it's just so nice. Uh, my, my gun deck, one thing I love about it is, is it's minimal. And I've, I've thought I've stretched the thing out by putting so much crap in it at one time. But it always goes back to the same shape. So these are just some of the nice teasers we got. These are some of the lower, like not lower, like cheaper prizes that we have in our giveaway. So I hope y'all don't y'all don't miss out on that because I think y'all will be thoroughly impressed and enjoy. So back to you, Zell. All right, man. See what you have before you there. That is a whole bunch of Hanks from the four hundred pound gorilla. Yeah, uh, buddy. Find him over on Instagram, and he has provided enough Hanks that each prize package, all six of them in the giveaway, are going to have a Hank in them. So, yeah, we need to thank 400 Pound Gorilla seriously for that because we got all kinds of cool stuff here. It is going to be just freaking great with the Gorilla and all the other people. We have a KME, we have a Wicked Edge. Uh, we got the KME base system with the base, and we've got a Wicked Edge WE100 with some uh, accessories with it. So, I think up to a thousand grid stones, huh? Yeah, I think it was. Awesome. I'd have to look in the box again. I think that said last time. That's why I was saying that. Yeah, so we've got some great sponsors. Be sure to click that bell button so that you can keep up with us because we will probably be doing. Good night, Frank. We'll probably be announcing everything in one of these late knife deals, and uh, it'll be on Instagram and all the other stuff too. But be sure you got the bell clicked so that whenever we start these things up, you guys will know about it. Yeah. Dave, you're not the only one. My wallet never has anything in it either. Yeah, mine's always empty too. Especially, I mean, I don't know if you have any kids, but if you, if you don't, that's where all my money goes. I've got kids, I'm and then... I went and bought something like that. I mean, holy crap. Yeah. That'll dump a wallet quick. <laughs> yeah, it'll it'll clean that wallet out real fast. But, uh, well, you have anything else, Zell? Because, like I said, my, my phone's about to die, so I'm going to sign out. And whenever, whenever, if you're done. Oh, yeah. We'll, we'll go ahead and close it up for the night, guys. Uh, we'll be back again sometime in the next several, the next few days. Next time, it will probably be on Instagram. We're trying to go back and forth. So if you're not following us on Instagram, I am Zelric42 on Instagram, and Staza is Staza23 on Instagram. And be sure to go over there and follow us there. And, of course, follow us here and click that little bell so you get your things every time we do one of these. And if nobody's got anything else left that's super pressing, then we are going to get out of here. We really appreciate you guys hanging out with us. This stuff is so fun doing it live with you guys yes, and being able to interact. Uh, Nick and I are having a great time with it, and we appreciate you guys showing up to hang out with us. And we will see you next time. See you all later. <laughs>